Thanks to the supporters of channel member Nick Berinsky. I know there's going to be people who want to talk about the beard. I, I don't want to talk about the beard. An accident happened. This was the best I could do to save a terrifying situation. Full details on my Twitter from earlier in the week. But really, I'd like to ignore the beard and just, just focus on the fact that we're in the knockout rounds of the Champions League. Hello and welcome to Club 5, part 22 of Not Lethal Legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have both legs of our Champions League round of 16 game against Napoli. I'm surprised we can play against another Italian team this early in the tournament, but apparently we can. Since you were last with me, we've played a lot of football matches, and until about 15 minutes ago, I thought I was going to tell you about how we'd won every league game, but then we went to Udinese and lost, presumably because there's a Champions League game coming up, and that's what happens in Football Manager sometimes. But we'd previously won our 24 consecutive st opening games of the season. We had 22 points clear at the top of the league after 25 games. We've got a goal difference of 80. This league is already pretty much wrapped up. Um, apparently, we can still finish as low as 10th. We probably won't finish as low as 10th, uh, but we, like I say, face Napoli now in this round of 16 game, and we've got to beat them. We must win the Champions League this season. The fact that we're dominating the league to the extent that we're dominating the league. We absolutely must win the Champions League this year. This has to be the final season with Juventus because domestically it's just too easy now. Um, it probably is the final hurrah of Dusan Vlaovic. He's only started 15 games in the league. He's still scoring plenty of goals, but we're just using him a lot more sparingly as he gets older and more fragile and rarely makes it to the end of 90 minutes now without having to go off. Uh, Locatelli, by the way, retired at the end of last season. He's now Empoli manager. He left um, recently and is now their manager. So that's nice. One of my boys moving on and becoming a big boy football manager. Um, and we didn't do any transfers at all in January because the financial situation of the club is once again crumbling around my feet. Nothing to do with me. Transfer debt of zero. I haven't spent money. We're on a net transfer profit this season. I've not spent a penny since August. The club is just falling apart financially. Again, and it's not my fault. It really isn't my fault. Let's win the Champions League because that should fix the financial issues. So this is the team we are going to be sending to Napoli for the first leg. We've got Benoit in goal, a back four of Mendes, Mansare, Maggioni and Agostini. Maggioni, he's quite good. He's getting better and better all the time. Um, so he gets a start. So anyway, similar to the situation we've got with Vlaovic up front, uh, Sotalo at centre-back is on his last legs, I think. Uh, so he's not playing very often. It's usually Maggioni or Coleric, um, or what's his face, the lad, the lad we signed in the summer whose name escapes me. Right, Taglioli, there he is. Um, it's usually one of those guys playing alongside Mansare. Um, and why can't I remember the names of any of my players this evening? I'm recording in the evening. That's the problem. If you want, if you follow me on Twitter on Twitch and you wonder why I didn't stream on Tuesday night, it's because I had to record this video before going to Turin for the event of sporting game, which as you're watching, this was yesterday. Hope I had a lovely time. Match day vlog coming out soon. I don't function in the evenings. This was a bad idea. Valente is the guy who also often plays at centre-back. As you know, you're fully aware of that. I'm too old to be working in the evenings. Boratini at the base of the midfield, then Veloso dos Santos and Gratikos ahead of him. Fabrice on the left, Bilga on the right, and Vlavic up front. Bilga, by the way, continues to just get better and better and better. 30 goal contributions in 24 matches in the league so far this season. 37 goal contributions from 34 starts in all competitions. And that includes international. You take international out of the equation, it's even more stupendous. The man, he's been described in the comment section as a messy regen. I think that's actually what he is, isn't he? We've got, we've got, uh, we've got the second coming of Lionel Messi and he's Belgian and he plays for Juventus and he's all ours and it's lovely. Um, so hopefully he'll have a wonderful performance today against Napoli. And obviously Napoli, well, you've seen how we're dominating Serie A, playing against other Serie A teams. You would think this should be nice, easy passage into the quarterfinal of the Champions League. But this is exactly the kind of nonsense where we're going to slip on a banana skin and end up getting knocked out again. And I, don't, I genuinely don't know what we do if we get knocked out here because... Another season of playing in Serie A is just going to be... I mean, it's another opportunity of getting an invincible season, I guess. Maybe we'll win every match. Or maybe this is the high point for this team. And with Sotalo 
Blavic, Zabozlai's leaving in the summer. Um, with that, the final dregs of that generation moving on, maybe this is the as good as this team is going to get. We still don't really have that long-term Vlaovic replacement. We play Amgar up front quite a lot, um, or we play him out wide with Bilger or Lazrak up front, but we don't really have that that 50 goal a season out and out striker that Vlaovic is. Bilger, I think his future is out on that right wing. He's just so good out there. It seems mad to move him up front as a regular thing because he does so well out on the right-hand side. Now my watch is getting involved. He's excited as well. It's 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 just Champions League o'clock and we're all very giddy about it. And let's hopefully open the scoring sometime soon. This is not like us at all to not be winning a football match. We were very nervy against Udinese. I could do without us being nervy here. Bilger has got him behind. He doesn't understand nervy. He gets him behind the Napoli defence, thunders it into that far post. There's not a chance the best player in the world is going to find himself offside in a Champions League knockout round match. So, I don't believe he was offside. I don't believe he knows how to be offside. I don't think he's capable of it. Let's have a little look. I mean, I think we changed the offside rule to fit what he thinks should be appropriate because he's that good. You bend the rules of the game to just allow him to show off. I think that's the appropriate thing to do. Ball forward from the free kick from Vlaovic. I think that was Maggioni with the header uh, that ends up not really threatening the Napoli goal. And we are moving towards half time. It remains nil nil. Obviously, we've had the better of the chances. We had one disallowed. And um, we have been, had the majority of the highlights, but it is Napoli who are on the attack here with an injured player. But it doesn't seem to matter because he still managed to get the ball into the penalty area. We were defending it quite well so far. Although we're struggling to actually get it clear. But Bilger, I think, is the one who intercepts there and releases Fabris on the left-hand side, who thought about going inside and has then decided to go around his man on the outside. There are options in the middle if he wants to use them. Um, and he decided to double back and try and win the... go past the same guy again. And quite rightly, that guy tackled him and said, don't don't take the... Uh, don't take the you-know-what. Goodness me. Mendes plays it into Veloso dos Santos. And now Boatini... Out to Agostini on the right. Switching the play over to this side. Now, Veloso dos Santos with a lovely ball forward to Bilger, who finds Vlaovic, and that's why Dusan Vlaovic is still in the team. And is Bilger offside again? Have I cursed him? Because there's no way Vlaovic is offside because the ball is played backwards towards him from Bilger. So it can only be Bilger from the Veloso dos Santos ball. And I was going to say, I didn't think he was. It was such a lovely, firm through ball from Veloso dos Santos. There was never really any doubt. And then the ball across from Bilger... I mean, yeah, there's no way that was offside. There's just, really, it seems a little bit silly. That's even gone to VAR. There was nothing to look at there. Um, but we are 1-0 up away from home, as we should be, considering just how far ahead of Napoli we are in the league. And we've already beaten them this season. I know we've beaten them because we've beaten everybody. So we won our first 24 consecutive games. So we've definitely beaten Napoli because we must have played them in the first 24 games. But they've now come back with an immediate equaliser through the injured guy that we mentioned before. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Don't mention opposition players ever. I didn't even have to mention him by name. Just mentioning, oh, there's a guy there with an injury. Of course he goes and scores. Why wouldn't he go and score? That's how football manager works. 1-1. One, one. We could do it with a Sotalo moment, even though he's not on the pitch. It's Mansare who tries to get onto the end of it. We've actually got both of our major goal-scoring threats from corners sat on the bench which might be a little bit of an oversight if it's if it's going to be this tight we might need Sotalo and or Valente in for the second leg just because they're so much bigger and better in the air than Maggioni and Mansare who you could argue are both fullbacks playing centre-back much more mobile but not as uh, not as aerially dominant not as useful in those set-piece situations Boatini now to Veloso dos Santos and now Bilger who's come deep come inside and plays it out to Fabris, who goes past his man nicely. No hesitation from him this time. But the shot is straight at the Napoli goalkeeper. He had Vlaovic right there. Just give it to him and let him put it in the back of the net. It's literally all he's in the team for at this point. He just has to hover around in the set, in the in the penalty area and wait for the ball to be given for him so that he can just score goals. That's all he's for. Let's not overcomplicate things. 1-1. One, one, we're into the second half. And I expected it to be a little more straightforward than this. Preston are away against Bayer Leverkusen in the other round of 16 game that's going on tonight. And one of my former boys, Satore, Italian as well. I've looked at bringing him here. Too, far too expensive. Um, but Preston are ahead away against Leverkusen in their match. Obviously, we'd love a dream Champions League final scenario of uh, 
of a Champions League final against Preston. They got to the final last year. No reason why, theoretically, they can't do it again, you would think. Um, I don't know why Taglioli has defaulted to a deep line playmaker there, but Amgar is on. Valente is on as well. Uh, Mansare was on a yellow card. And Valente, like we mentioned before, does offer that little bit extra from the uh, from this attacking set pieces that hopefully will, uh, I mean, it might be a difference maker. And goodness me, Napoli have just missed a big opportunity to go ahead. If we lose two matches in a row, I don't know how this team responds to that. It's been so long since we lost a match. That Udinese game that we've just played off camera is, uh, it's been a little bit of a shock, a little bit of a shock to the system that we don't seem to be coping with very well. And we're going to make a couple of changes here to, to try and freshen things up a little bit. We'll get Ruiz and Zabozlai on just to, just to change the people who are aiming at Vlaovic, I guess. Um, the, the two wide men who are out there are both shattered. These two much more much more likely to try and create a chance than go for goal on their own. Although Bilger obviously has got a gazillion assists this season, so that's a load of nonsense. 1-1. One, one. I guess it's fine. We've not lost the away leg. I guess it's okay. That is two consecutive matches against Italian opposition that we've not won, though. And when we won so many in a row, I mean, we just, we beat Napoli. We put five past Napoli just a couple of weeks ago in the in the Fanta Fizzy Pop Cup. Mm. We'll go and play Perugia. Then we're going to be back for the second leg. Well, that's reassuring. We beat Perugia 7-0. I was starting to worry that the side bits of my beard might have been the source of my powers. But no, we are able to do football goals without it. So that is reassuring so into the second leg against Napoli we've made a few changes from the first leg Sotalo is coming in for that aerial threat from the set pieces that we talked about we're going with Gratikos and Gervasio as our midfielders um, and Vlaovic will come back in up front he didn't play against Perugia because we're trying to use him sparingly um, Amgar probably will feel a little bit unlucky to miss out um, having been involved in a 7-0 win but it wasn't uh, he was scoring all the goals but I am starting to think that Amgar makes Bilger play better because he's so quick, he's running around, he's opening up spaces for Bilger, whereas Vlaovic, much less mobile, and it ends up leaving Bilger less space to play, and Bilger becomes more about trying to create for Vlaovic when Vlaovic is in the team. When Amgar's up there, like I say, he's stretching the defence and creating gaps for Bilger to just go and do his thing and run the game completely himself, which is what he did again against Perugia. So we'll see how we uh, how we start things off. If we are struggling, the unthinkable might happen and we might take off Vlaovic. The current Ballon d'Or holder, uh, Bilger, plays the cross in for Vlaovic and it comes back off the crossbar. Um, Mendes has picked up an injury, I've just noticed. So I think we're going to have to make a substitution um, and it's going to mean Amgar has to come on to play left back 15 minutes in, which does kind of... Uh, I guess it means I don't have to make that difficult decision in front of all of you and risk you telling me I'm a silly bear for taking off Vlaovic when we need a goal. Um, Agostini trying to play it across to Gratikos, who bursts out of midfield. Couldn't quite get a proper connection on it, though, and it ends up going fairly harmlessly over the crossbar. We have started brightly, though. We've been the better team again, like we were in the first leg. But it counts for nothing if we don't actually win the football match. And Napoli now... With the free kick, and they have taken the lead. And this is feeling an awful lot like last year. How on earth can we be so good in the league and so pathetic in the Champions League against a team from our own league who we're like 30 points ahead of? This is not okay. They've got another free kick now. Playing it into the area again. If they score again, oh my word, I don't know what I'm going to do. I, I genuinely... Don't have a plan for if we lose here <laughs> other than try and race through another season of just showing you the Champions League. That's all we're doing now. If you watch the Apollon series that I did a few years ago, uh, we got to the point in that where we were just dominating domestically and I just showed you the Champions League every year. I mean, if we have to do another season with Juventus, it will just be Champions League. We'll just assume we're going to win Serie A. And we're 2-0 down at home. And we have got an enormous amount of work to do here. I'm a little shell-shocked because I don't understand how that's happened. Yeah, you want to dive around, Benoit. Make it look like you're actually doing something. You haven't saved either of the shots they've had in the match. Um, Agostini, we have... I mean, we've we've got a sort... I, I, 
I've got no words. Bilga needs a huge performance. It's a big ball forward from him. It's a lovely pass for Fabrice who cuts it back to Gervasio. And Gervasio grabs a goal back. And that was, I mean, that was wonderful from Bilga. I mean, look at this pass. It is absolute perfection. That's the one thing about another another season that'd be quite nice. Continue seeing that boy develop. Um, but Fabrice plays it back to Gervasio and we've got a goal back and now we're going to demand more again and hopefully grab ourselves an equaliser before half time and and we can go out in the second half and and turn this around. This shouldn't be happening. Like I say, we just beat them 5-2 at home in the league less than a month ago. We are much better than Napoli. Yet we're losing to them. Bilga with the ball through to Flavic and it's a miss from Flavic. What's going on? He doesn't miss. I don't understand. He never misses. How on earth? What? Oh, it might not be our day. Gratikos to Bilga and now Agostini. People have warned me about Juventus in the Champions League. It might never happen. Agostini. Come on, let's have an equaliser. Right on the stroke of half time. It's a, an overhit cross, but Amgar... Has it back on the left-hand side. Bursts past his man. Just slide it across. Why do that? Just drill it across goal. Vlaovic was there waiting. Bilga was there waiting. We are missing opportunities. And this has... Uh, this has not gone to plan in that first half at all. Come on, boys. We are going to... We're going to encourage. Rather than demanding more all the time, let's offer some encouragement. Amgar does well to win that back. He's so quick. He really is fast. And now Sotalo forward to Gratikos and Bilger, who's come inside again. It's a lovely pass from Bilger again to Vlaovic. How's that not gone in? Dusan Vlaovic, this is what I've been saying. He's not the same player. The decline has begun, I think. Fabris with the corner. We've got Sotalo on. Oh, I was, I was on my way up there. I thought he'd scored. We've seen Sotalo score from there so many times. It really is starting to feel like it's not our day. Hopefully, it's just Football Manager toying with me a little bit before letting us go on and win, get the win. But we have had several times where it's situations that are always goals for us are not leading to goals and we're being hit against the run of play. And that's a penalty. Oh, my word. I mean, I think it's outside of the area, but when, when the game decides to go against you, the game decides to go against you. Please don't give this as a penalty referee. Turning point, please. Amgar gets a yellow card. I think we have to put Amgar up front. And we've got to take off Vlaovic. It's even more mad when Amgar's played an hour at left back to move him up front. But I think we've just got to do it. I think this is the end of Vlaovic. Um, we must have someone who can, I mean, Valente, oh, Mansare can go over to left back. There we go. That gets Valente on as another a, a set piece option as well. That is a bonkers thing to have done. Demand more. And hopefully we start to see Bilger more of a goal threat. Now Amgar's going to open up spaces for him. I just hope we've not left it too late. Maybe we should have started with this. It's what we've been doing in the league lately. And, right, we have a throw. It's Mansare. Can we score here, please? Uh, Mansare plays it into Bilga. Back to Gratikos. Gervasio, there's Amgar. I think he's offside. I mean, it was lovely quick passing. I couldn't keep up with it. I think he is probably offside. That's his little bit of inexperience as a centre forward showing. Yeah, does Vlaovic score there? There's the question. I mean, it's so quick. I mean, Bilga, just, he's just brilliant. Everything he touches is brilliant. But he can't do it on his own. Right, Gratikos is going to come off for Firi. Gervasio is going to come off for Owning. And that will do for now. Just different... Different energy in midfield. We're demanding more again. Please, can somebody do a goal sometime soon? Please and thank you. Um, Agostini to Firi. And now Bilga, who's come very deep again, plays it out. Fabris has nodded it down to Amgar and he's missed. Does Vlaovic score that? He does, doesn't he? Vlaovic absolutely scores that one. 
Oh, what else have we got? Have we got anything else to throw onto this foot? We've got Lazrak, who's not fully fit. But Bilger's shattered. But Bilger's been... We can't take... We stick Bilger up front and bring Lazrak on, I think. And we're going to do this. Oh. Wow, we've used all our stoppages. That's not ideal. Right, well, we still, I think, put Bilger up front because we're so desperate for a goal. And just try it that way round. I can't believe we're going to be knocked out of the Champions League again. We are cursed in this competition. You wouldn't believe I've already won it twice in this save. Mansaray to Fabrice. Please, somebody do a goal. Please. I am baffled at what I'm seeing because we're so much better than Napoli. It's clear from what I'm seeing that we're better than them. We're just... I've wronged the FM gods, I think. Right, Bilger. Play, tries to play Fabrice in, but Bilger is tiring and he's starting to mishit things. And that's not good. I mean, he's he's on another level to everyone else on the pitch, but it's no good if he's shattered. Um, oh, they're in again and they're going to score. And okay, Ben White collects that one. We've got 10 minutes, less than 10 minutes. Please do something. Look at the XG. People will be saying, Kev, why aren't you changing the tactics? Because the tactics are working. Look at the match stats. Everything we've done is working. We're just not getting any kind of luck go our way. Right, a Sotalo moment, a Valente moment. This is why they're in the team. We need a goal here. It's the last attack of the game. It was cleared off the line. Valente got such good contact on it. I thought it was in. That illustrates everything I was just saying. We're doing everything right. And it's just not going our way. I cannot believe what has just happened. Well. We've been knocked out of the Champions League. Okay. I mean, the series could potentially end here, not here, in the next couple of episodes. If Preston go on and win the Champions League without me, that dream is done. I'm going back there to be the hero, not to win it again after Ferguson has already won it. Well. The next video you see will be my Juventus match day vlog, and I'll be back next week, hopefully with more beard to try and figure out what on earth to do now. We are just, just, ugh. The Champions League is horrible. Look at this horrible record Juventus have got in the Champions League. Well, I'm very sad. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.